When is an old building worth saving? When it's a hundred years old? Two hundred? Or do you save it when it just seems to belong there? There was, I guess, no pressing need to clean up or do something else with it. And by the time they thought of it, they found out it was filled with, you know, asbestos and all kinds of things that were quite dangerous. And so it's just been left alone. I had noticed that there was a chain link fence surrounding the, the Gasco building. And I thought, well, I, you know, I've got a license to ask questions. I'll, I'll call Northwest Natural and find out what they're doing. I thought, you know, perhaps they're doing some restoration work or whatever, I didn't know, but they're just something had changed. They said that, yeah, they were planning to demolish. This is just a few years after the 1905 Lewis and Clark Centennial, which put Portland on the map. And Portland at this point is a more, more established city than San Francisco or Seattle. Everyone knew Gasco because it had plumes of smoke and steam. So this wasn't natural gas, this was manufactured gas. From Portland, you could see it and smell it. I had no idea I had a personal connection to this building when I fell in love with it. So the love only got deeper when I found out, oh my God, that was my great grandfather behind this building. C.F. Adams was the chairman of the board of Portland Gas and Coke pretty much from 1891 to his death. I don't know, it just kind of has a life to it, a life of its own. It has a personality, I think. You know, all the years that it's been sitting here. Back in January, a couple of uh, members of our photography group came down. We were inspired by the fact that we heard that it was going to be torn down and I posted a few pictures and that's about the same time that other people online were looking to connect about the building and how they felt about it being torn down. It's part of our history. And if we get that up and going and then have the survey accessible on there, mm -hmm. you know, then you're, you're getting a little bit more of a reach from the rest of the community. We live in St. Helens, and so we're always driving Highway 30 into Portland, and we just would always see it there off on the side, and it was so mysterious and fabulous, and nobody knew what it was. So we'd kind of play a little game in the car of like, what's that building? And what are we gonna do with it when we hit the lottery? I was just flabbergasted that anybody was gonna tear down this gorgeous structure that we've been driving past all this time. Within the first hour, we had almost 100 people already. By the end of a week, we had almost gotten to 1,000. I mean, it just started building really fast. If the community can't come up with a way to save the building, then Northwest is going to go ahead and take it down. They've pretty much passed it on to us. Portland is experiencing a lot of little preservation crises like this across the city right now. Uh, you have Memorial Coliseum threatened, you have uh, an early 20th century Multnomah County Courthouse that's threatened, and you have lots of houses that are being torn down to make 
room for duplexes or, or condos. And so uh, this is a, a dangerous time for historic architecture in Portland. Um, you know, we all want the economy to be doing well, but sometimes there can be a kind of um, downside to development that sees, um, uh, you know, great buildings lost. They have to clean up the land there anyway as part of this Superfund site, so it's very easy to imagine some kind of uh, park-like setting with the building either restored or left as a ruin. Um, American cities are, are repairing some of their industrial waterfronts and allowing them to be uh, returned to public use. No one denies how damaged this land is and no one wishes this plant were still burning coal. But sometimes you protect something, not despite its troubled history, but because of it. Maybe a city that's growing fast needs reminders of where it's been, so that it knows where it needs to go.